Hey everybody, this is Jim and Corky back from Reflections and Route. You can also find us at Roofing Bales and Streets and Eats for our podcast. Uh, but today on the video, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite places in Germany, one of my favorite castles, maybe even in the world. Really? Yeah. Uh, and that is called Berg Els. Now you probably have heard or seen Berg Els. It's a very popular Instagrammable place. And um, I, I think it's very iconic yeah, it really when you're is. looking at pictures of Germany, you'll often see either Neuschwanstein, which is the Disney castle, or Burgels. Um, they're both, I would say, equally photogenic, iconic places to go. Yeah, it, beautiful. Eight towers sitting down in a valley. It's never been conquered in any battle, any war. It's been maintained by the same family. The same family. That has owned it for and built like it. 900 years. 900 years. And the family still owns it and maintains some residences in the castle. It is the same family. But of course, through the years, there has been a little bit of feuding yeah, as of families do. And at first, there were three sons that had to share the castle. And then after... I don't know how many, couple hundred years, there was a falling out. And then one so one side of the family bought out bought the out. other two sides of the family. It's still the same family, but there has been some changes. Right. Um, and it, But it's a fascinating history, which you're going to find out. Because one of the things that you do have to do in Berg Helps, if you want to go in, you have to go on a tour. Yeah. They don't just let you wander. It's it's by tour only, guided tour. There's English tours regularly throughout the day, um, although it is actually closed in the wintertime. So make sure you figure that into your planning. Um, but you take this tour and they take you through two of the different family sections of the castle. And really, Berg Elts is, I don't know that it's unique, but it's very, it's very different than a lot of castles around the world. Uh, and that's because in Germany, they had this type of castle that was built when you had like multiple heirs in a family. And like in this case, three different branches of the same family. No single branch by themselves back 900 years ago could afford to build their own castle. But between the three of them, they could build the castle. And so they built three separate sections of the castle all in this one castle. And today you can't go through the entire castle because there are still people living on site. So those are private apartments, of course. And there's business offices and maintenance areas and certain other parts of the castle that are not open to visitors. But the tour that you go on takes you through a gorgeous area, yeah. through some beautiful rooms. There's a couple of sitting rooms. There's a banquet room. There's the armory. The armory is my favorite place. Well, you start out at the armory. Yes. And so in a way, that's kind of, it's your favorite, but it's also your first taste of it. Right. So yeah, it's got cool weapons and things. I mean, it's a neat place, but I don't know if it would always be your favorite if, if maybe you started somewhere yeah, else. Because I think that your first view of something sometimes you know, makes that a difference. That may be true. But anyway. But it is a really good introduction to the, the castle on tour because it is jam-packed full of all these, like, range of weaponry and armor from 900 years ago on up through the Middle Ages. Now, of course, it's not, like, modern weaponry or anything like that, but Which is okay. medieval weaponry. And I think it's one of the best collections that I've seen, even in museums. I mean, it is... Stunning how much stuff they have in there. And it's really it's a small room. It's a small room, but it is jam packed. And I I feel like it's a really good taste of what's to come because in all of the rooms, they've done such a good job of maintaining the collections that they've had throughout the years yeah. and keeping it on display. So it's not like in some castles like this where you walk from room to room and there might be three or four items. No, it's no. like everywhere you look, you will see something different. Well, and, and it, it's set up like people are living in it, mm -hmm. which I think is really Im impressive. Of course, you can't go behind the barriers or anything. I thought my favorite room, and all of them are fantastic, quite frankly. It's hard to pick a favorite. It, it is. But my favorite room was definitely the bedroom. 
first of all, you've got to, I don't know what, bedrooms are, are always cool. And, of course, old-timey beds, you know, they're like this big, or they seem like they're that big and they wouldn't fit anybody. Yeah. This is a big canopy bed. It's on a platform. That's all interesting. But one of the most interesting parts of it is, over on one side is a little alcove that's a chapel. Oh, yeah. And they... Because of the, you know, the weather in Germany, and I'm sure 900 years ago or even 500 years ago, it was a lot colder in the winter than it is now. A, because of, you know, modern times, but B, because they didn't have central heating and all that yeah. stuff. So when they, so when they heated a room, they, I think, tended to stay there as long as they could. So they didn't really want to leave the bedroom. But they still had to pray every day and right. they still had to have their chapel. Would they wake up and before they go to bed? And who knows? And then on top of that, they had to deal with all these rules. And one of the rules was that you couldn't build a chapel higher. No, you couldn't build anything that would go higher than the chapel. Anything. The chapel has to be the highest Right, thing. but there'd be nothing above the chapel. So they had to kind of build a special chapel out over the courtyard so that it wasn't breaking any laws or anything. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. With its own cool. roof. Yeah, yeah, with its own roof. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty neat. I, well, I also liked the kitchen. I thought the kitchen was really good. They had a really good collection of, you know, what you would find in a kitchen 800 years ago. And the oven, the ovens and all the accoutrements, just super cool. Well, one of the things I liked about the kitchen was these castle. Well, first of all, the castle is built on this bedrock. So, of course, which most castles are built right on the bedrock. And then on top of that, the walls are like, you know massively thick. thick like two right. meters thick so it had a built-in sort of cooling system in the, in the yeah. kitchen right. and they had i couldn't believe how many of these i don't know 20 I don't, I, I don't know but it was like a red door and you open the door and there you could um it was like a refrigerator oh, so right. you could put your you know meats or your yeah, cold storage cold storage whatever you needed to keep cool and it was a natural thing. You didn't have to have electricity, which is a good thing, because guess what? They didn't have electricity. Didn't have or lighting or anything <laughs> or like that. Or any of that. Torches and candles and that. Well, and that's another thing that I think is pretty impressive. It didn't, there may have been a fire or two or whatever, but nothing that ever destroyed the castle. Right. And it was never um, overtaken. There was times that it was definitely battles because people are always trying to overtake whoever had things, but. Yeah, but a great defensive structure. Yeah. Yeah. And. In a really good location, surrounded by rich farming. Uh, it's not far from the, the Mosul River and, of course, all the vineyards along the river. Beautiful it's not far vineyards. from the Rhine. And so they were in a good location as far as, like, taxing trade goods and things like that. So I think the family stayed pretty prosperous throughout the years. And they've obviously got a good business sense because they're still making tons of money today. Yeah, right. Um, they have two places to eat on site. One is more of a snacky type place and one is more of a restaurant. Um, when we were there, we had already had reservations someplace else mm -hmm. um, that we were really excited to go eat at. But um, once we got there, if we hadn't had reservations, we may have Oof. changed our mind because they had this beautiful cartoffel potato soup that looked really yummy. And it, was, it wasn't it was that cold and it wasn't that misty on the day that we went, but it was still, you know, Oops, something sorry. about soup that always makes you want to... It was fall, which is a good time to go there because it is surrounded by uh, deciduous trees. So you get that fall color really, really uh, vibrantly in that area. So that's good. And it would have been a great day for a bowl of soup and a worst and maybe a beer. Who knows? I do want to say that that's something that when you think about Burgelts, you really want to think about. One of the things I started out saying was it is an Instagram place. Hmm. And if you go during April through October, when the castle is open, there are going to be people there. A I lot know. of people. I don't think it matters if you go on a weekday or if you go in the morning or whatever, by 11 o'clock it's packed. Hmm. Um, so if you want to go and get some Instagram pictures, that's when you really might want to go between November and March. Right. Because especially if you go midweek in the morning or in the evening or whenever you want to go, there there probably will be people hiking around the area because it is so gorgeous. But I mean one or two other people versus 
one or 200 other people makes a huge difference in Instagram photos, don't you think? Yeah. And I think that and even if it's raining, you could go because you could have a colorful umbrella. Right. You could do some really things, really fun things. You could take a family and do your family portraits. I mean, I think it's a good idea to go there for photos. I don't think it's a good idea to go there for photos and see the inside of the castle. Well, so you kind of have to think about that. It's closed November through March as far as taking tours go. But you can still hike the area. You can walk down. And the castle itself is just a stunning view. If you park in the parking lot up higher and then you take the trail walking down, you just get view after view of the stunning castle surrounded by a, a little river valley and the trees. And it's just beautiful. It is. Um, which, by the way, is something that is important to know as well. You, the parking lot is kind of above where the castle is. And so you walk down a little bit and you can take a shuttle or you can walk the whole way down. Um, we took a shuttle because we had our three-year-old with mm -hmm. us, our little AJ. who probably could have made it as it turns out, but, you know, we took the shuttle yeah. and he loves buses. So, of course, that was fun for him. What I recommend is you walk down because yeah, you're going to get all the you're views. Get a good view. And then, you know, you'll know what the walk was like. And if you're up to it to walk back out, you can hike back out. Or you can choose to take the shuttle at that point and take the shuttle up the hill. Because it was a pretty steep hill. And getting there is super, super easy. Because right in the parking lot is a bus station. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, not a station with a building, but a... A bus stop. Bus stop. A bus stop. And uh, that means that you can take a train to the nearest place. And then you can take a bus right up to the castle. So it's pretty easy. And of course we drove, we drive everywhere. So the parking was nice and yeah, simple it was as well. About an hour, hour and 20 minutes from the Kaiserslautern area. So easily do it on a day trip, no problem at all. And like I said, you could go on two day trips, one to go through the castle and do the tour and everything, maybe have lunch. And then the second time to go do your photos or mm. a third time or a fourth time. Easy. Yeah. Uh, you can go back every season and get different views, and it's always stunning. And there's plenty. Oh, my goodness. There's so much to do in the area. It's not oh. far from the Rhine. It's not far from the Mosul. There's all those little Rhine towns. Um, River cruises. Yeah. Wine if you've tasting. got people coming to visit, perfect place to go. Yeah. I can't really say enough about Burgelt. I think it's gorgeous. It never disappoints. Um I think the tour is well worth it. It's not something you want to do over and over again. If you have people come and you've already been through it, that's up to you. I right. personally would not take the kids more than once, especially because, you know, you're standing there listening to someone talk. And I think that could that's be a little hard. hard. Um, but a AJ did pretty good because there is so much in all of the rooms that even though the guide is talking, you can still kind of wander around and just check out all the stuff in the room. And that kept him... Pretty occupied. He, he was it's not a lot of hands-on activities. No. So, yeah. Over, a repeat visit for him, he might be kind of like... Mm, there is a little shop right at the entrance slash exit of the castle that I thought had some different, a little bit different things than some of the other places. Mm. And one of the things that AJ really loved, even as a three-year-old, was the figurines. They had little metal figurines that you could buy of the different... You know, there were archers and... People with knights and whatever halberds and stuff like that. Yeah, he really enjoyed that. He liked that. Um, like we said, there's plenty to do in the area. There's other castles. There's plenty of vineyards. There's great food around the area. Um, you know what? Go to Burgout. Yeah, there's a reason why it's my favorite castle in Germany. What did you rate it? Oh, four, five. I would rate it a five. I, it's a five. I mean, obviously, for we've me. been at least three times. Yeah. At least three. And, I, I don't know if I've counted them all. And you did say about like going on the tour more than once. Now, if there's a lot, a big time difference between tours, because we went on the tour a, a long, long time. long time ago. And it was nice to go on the tour again. I think they've done a lot of renovation work. I know that one year we went out there. There was scaffolding there was all scaffolded, over. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a great year for the outside views. Um yeah, I think they're constantly working on it and updating it. And uh, so maybe after a couple of years, a repeat visit, definitely. I mean, that's what makes it a five, too, is the fact that we would go back to it over and over again. But Burgaltz is a beautiful castle in a beautiful setting in one of the, I think, most spectacular parts of Germany, the wine-growing regions of the Rhine and the Mosul. It, it's more than worth a visit. 